Hello Cancer, this is your reading for whenever. <laughs> because I'm not really doing weekly, I'm just doing it when I have time right now. I'm in the middle of packing up house, getting ready to move, so I've got some time for you today. I'm looking forward to do a reading with you. And what I'm going to do with you guys today is I'm being called to do a fairy reading. So we're going to go into the fairy oracle deck and pick out a fairy card with a message for you. And then we're going to look at the cards and see what the fairies are asking you to release, embrace, show you any hidden factors that you're unaware of, any energy that is approaching you. There is also an extended at the end of this reading. The link is at the top of the description. In the extended, we will pull out another fairy card to represent the archetypal energy of your inner child, so your deeper soul at this point. And then we will find out what your inner child is asking of you how you're responding and how your inner child would like you to respond so those are the reasons the, re the reading that i'm going to do for you right now and i'm i don't i won't say i'm struggling but i'm working through uh i have more stuff in my mouth uh as my bite continues to get corrected so i have bottom braces and i have rubber bands and i have a load of wax in there right now and i still manage to bite my tongue and slur what do we think when you have so many things in your mouth that aren't supposed to be there that you're having trouble talking and eating? <laughs> so, my dear Cancerians, let's start with a fairy card for you. A fairy card for Cancerians. A fairy card for Cancerians. You got two. And they came out together very distinctly. So, you have unity... And fairies of the future. Interesting, interesting energy. Why am I feeling like somebody else had some sort of strong message about unity uh, in the last little bit of readings that I've done? I can't remember who it is though. Let's just go into what we have here. So unity is card number one. And the fairies of the future is card number 33. So let's start with number one. Unity. Union, mystical experience, spiritual home. Unity comes first and last. In between we have the illusion of duality, which we all believe in for a very long time. This apparent duality is ultimately shown to be an illusion. But it is an illusion through which we must pass, through which we learn and grow, and then once again return to unity. You may have had mystical experiences where you have had true union and other beings, with other beings, or even with the unity, the one who is all. Such experiences change our lives, effectively showing us that the saying, we are all one, is not just a pious, pious belief, but it's a statement of actual fact. We are not separate like the flowers in a field, but are one. The only way to reach this awareness is to surrender the small everyday self to the larger spiritual self, which is unity. Experiencing full oneness with the unity is transformative. In the reading, when this card comes up in a reading, it is asking us to remember the mystical concept that we are all one. Unified in a holistic universe, it reminds us to look at the needs and goals we have in common with others and to seek cooperation and community action rather than attempting to do everything on our own. To achieve our goals, we need the active cooperation of others and to get that cooperation, we must be helpful to them and willing to work with their ideas as well as our own. It suggests that we think of things in terms of equal partnerships rather than in lines of hierarchical authority. Unity also tells us that we have much to gain by remembering our own wholeness. Resolution of inner conflicts is often necessary before we move ahead. It is important that this time that we work toward cooperation and reconciliation within and without. Seek the highest good of all involved and not merely your idea of highest good. Ask for the divine energy of unity to permeate and guide you. I love that without even reading this yet. The fairies of the future. I 
I'm I'm really getting the feeling that you're moving towards um, because we're talking about fairies of the future coming in next after unity. So kind of becoming one with the flow, kind of becoming one with your own energy. Sorry, this is my dog Lily. She's probably seeing somebody out a window. Um, and once you've accomplished that, then you come into union with new ideas and new partnerships here that not only are they in your future, but it feels like to me, before we even read this card, that they have something to do with continuing the path of your future. Lily! Lily! Come down here, Lily! I'm going to page 33 while I holler at Lily. My little dog, Lily, um, has a nemesis. And the ne <laughs> Lily! Well, come down here! Well, come on. Go look out the window and you'll feel much better about everything. Yeah, go look out the window. That's a good girl. Okay. Yeah, she, her little nemesis looks just like her. She's small and white and fluffy. And her nemesis is small and black and fluffy. And they're both female. I don't know if they're in the same age range. Well, the nemesis went on her lawn today, the front lawn, and it did a popo. And then it cracked up, up the grass. Like, of course, they want to pick it up and all. Oh, Lily was <laughs> So she's on high alert right now. She does not feel that she can trust the nemesis. <laughs> so, the fairies of the future for you, Cancer. Be here now. And I'm saying now because now is all in capitals. Be here now. Guidance. Moving forward. The gnome of now at the top of the card. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this card. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember this now. It's been a while. I hope it's coming into focus. I can't see my hand is in the way. This dude way at the top. Okay. The gnome of now at the top of the card looks both ways simultaneously. Something that would give a human a crick in the brain if he tried it. However, the gnome has no particular problem with this, as fairies always have a sliding sense of past, present, and future. Anna, in the center steps boldly forth, pregnant with possibilities and carrying the hazelnut that grants wisdom. Puggy, above her, crouches ready to take off and rush ahead just as soon as she is sure what direction they are going, while the frog above her waits, hoping to be kissed, just to see what will happen. Uh, Amalathia? Amalathia? Amaltha? On the left, Hesitates momentarily, not sure she is dressed properly or has her hair done right for the occasion. Nearly everyone looks to the future with cheerful optimism. For all of Anna's bold stepping forward, if you look closely, you can see that she has her eyes on the wise gnome king at the lower left. Come on, come into focus. There we go. Do you see? She's the pregnant one, kind of front and center right there. She's looking down. Okay, she's looking down at the wise gnome king in the lower left. He seems sure of the way to go. He is relying on his gut sense to guide him, knowing that this is his magic and it will serve him better than logic in the unknown future. Being a gnome, a son of earth, he is well grounded in reality, which is what it takes to have trustworthy gut feelings. Anna, being wise, or at least very nearly so, trusts him in this. Of course, she hasn't considered that where he wants to go may not be where she would most like to be. Fortunately, he has considered that and is pointing her in the right direction. The pleasingly plump gnome lady, admiring the gnome king from her mushroom, hopes to be invited on the journey, though she would do better to invite herself, like all the others instead of waiting. The old oak man in the lower right is firmly rooted in the present and has no desire to travel in space. His journey is through time only, as he contemplates the wisdom of stillness and deep roots. He is contented, serene, and wise because his life suits him and he has learned to make the best of what he has. He is happy to watch the other fairies pass by. It suits him, but this is not a way most fairies and humans usually choose to live. Both humans and fairies have constantly adventuring, are constantly adventuring into the future, being carried there by Old Father Time and Earth Mother, acting hand in hand, 
Even the galaxies spin into the future, creating strange effects and relationships between time and space and light. He who hesitates doesn't get lost. He gets dragged along. Will he? Nil he? <laughs> Bumping bruisingly behind the rest. He might as well get up and hustle along too. It's ever so much nicer a way to travel. These fairies are on an exciting journey to co-create the future with the universe, just as we are. They greet each rising dawn and each rising moon with unconditional and expectant gratitude. Join them. I have so much to say about this <laughs> so reading. In the reading, Brian writes, who is the author of this, these are the fairies of a bright future and are essentially are and are essential companions on any journey. When these fairies appear, it is time to consider where we have been and where we wish to go. There are many opportunities, many potentials, but we must choose a path and then take realistic, practical steps to bring the desired future into being. This is not a time to wait for things to come to us, but to step forward boldly to meet them. We may do this alone, if we wish, or in the company of those who share our goals and dreams. I have so much to say about this card now. <laughs> wow. Okay, I feel like you guys are getting the reading here. I feel like the Oakmen are, are passing a torch. If you're not familiar with the Oakmen, they're one of the fairies in this book, this deck, that came out back in April of last year. I think it was April? Was it before then? I think it was April of last year. Um, they came out actually in an Aries reading. And they were trying to say something. And at the time, I didn't understand. It was more of a collective message. And then I started doing weekly readings from the Oakmen to the collective. And they were quite fascinating. And they were always filled with so much um, inspiration and guidance for us, particularly in the point in time that most of us were experiencing around the Earth at the same time. I, I find it very profound that this card speaks of the future. And you talk about unity here for you. I want to say too, anyone that's drawn to this reading, I would look and see where does Cancer sit in your houses um, or what's sitting in, um, what is uh, what? the sixth house, Cancer is the sixth house. What is in your sixth house? I feel like this reading could really be for everyone, especially if you've watched Oakman readings on my channel in the past. I feel like guys, because the Oak, the Oak man, as it was said in this book, stays rooted and is not going forward but y'all are y'all are going forward <laughs> there's something about obviously leaving the past behind and moving forward i would call it um even perhaps experiencing some melancholy um some nostalgia as you move forward yeah there may be things from your past, like even so long ago, Cancer, that you you kind of bring up. They come up through you emotionally and you experience it and it's almost as if to put it to rest and then to put it to rest. And you might be surprised what some of these things are and how they come forward for you. And maybe there's a, a significant reason there. I did, um, I got kind of emotional in the extended for Gemini the other day and it was something I didn't something that I experienced a long time ago like probably 18 19, no seven I don't know it was a long time ago it was a, two cats that I had and I had to find a new home for them and it was the whole story of uh one of them came back as I was leaving the house and I mean I can talk about it now I'm okay with it because she came back she knew we were never going to see each other again but at the time it was like I don't know where it came it was almost like I was living that moment Again, I feel like as you, this is part of the unity that you are experiencing where your past and your, and your present almost melt together in certain points in time for you. As you prepare to go into the future, it, and it does feel like the old men are saying, there was the stability, the rooted grounding of such a mighty fairy to come forward at a time where so much may have seemed like chaos and confusion and not really knowing what was going to happen or how things were going to unfold. And 
a little bit of coming into that energy and being that stable, grounded, um, fortified root system for yourself and maybe others around you. And now it's time to kind of pluck the roots out because you aren't that mighty oak tree. You are a human and you're being led by the fairies. You're being led by your angels and your guides in the universe to move forward. I, I feel like a more a big shift in something energetically here. Very profound. To that, if you are going to be experiencing things from your past, even as thoughts, or you may encounter, uh, maybe you'll be reading something in a book, or someone will bring up something in a conversation, and it brings you back in time 20 years ago, 8, 10 years ago. I know I have some very young watchers on here as well. Um, and 6 years ago, 4. Whatever that is for you. And not, uh, why? Like, I don't know. It's something to be processed something to be understood at a level of understanding that you have now that you did not have 20 years ago. So it needs to come forward for you now, where some of these things will be coming forward for you now, because you're going to process it in a different way. And it's a very holistic type of healing before you move forward. Because if you're processing, if you can actually almost feel like you're, you're living that experience again, and you, you process it where you are now. Because we always say, if I'd only had the experience, uh, the knowing that I, if I had that then, that I have now, like when you're young, and I'm, it's not coming out right, I'm sorry. You know what I'm trying to say um, in that youth. But you see, that's kind of what this is. That's what's happening. You're taking the lessons of your past, and you're, I don't want to say you're still learning from them. You're transmuting them somehow. So the tarot, what are you being asked to release? What are you being asked to embrace? Oh, <laughs> hidden factors that you weren't aware of. Wow. All right. Okay, it's worth it. <laughs> Energy that is approaching you. Ooh, this is, ooh, this is interesting. You're being asked to be still one last time. I really feel that. You get, okay. What are you being asked to release? The Ace of Swords? No. Oh, it is, it is. I thought it was the page. It's the Ace. The Ace of Swords. What are you being asked to embrace? The Eight of Swords. Hidden factor that you are unaware of is the Ten of Pentacles. There's something going on around you. Something's playing out around you that you don't have a direct cause and effect on or in right now and the universe is holding you back if you're you may not even feel held back yet there might be something that will make you feel held back coming into your future um but i i feel very much like because something is playing out around you sort of like that three or four or five degrees of separation It's very beneficial. It's a little bit like something is being prepared for you in the future. And not necessarily like there's people preparing something, waiting for you to come and experience this. It's just things are going through motion and things are happening the way they're supposed to happen. But you're not supposed to be there yet. Maybe you're, maybe you've been doing a really good spiritually healing um, cycle for yourself or, or you've been planting some really excellent seeds. And you've been tending to them and nurturing them. And I know my Cancerians do that. You guys are just, you're great energy to come into. Um, you guys really often do recognize your value. I, I see that in the comments too. With, this is one of the signs I, I, would, I have to say Cancer and Capricorn, my two, the two C's. You guys really do um, exhibit a lot of that. 
And I, I feel like maybe I had this once before for someone, almost like you're ahead in a cycle. You're, something's going on here. And the universe just needs you to hold back a little bit. But there might be something put up to slow you down a little. To be, to be, for the, for the universe to ask you to embrace the Eight of Swords. There's something to be looked at. Wow. Now I see it here. Okay, the energy that's approaching you is the Four of Swords. And the underlying card here is the Seven of Wands and the Devil. Wow, okay, this, you guys had one last tear. I'm gonna call it last week, <laughs> maybe a little longer than that since I did a reading for you. The three of swords is in reverse behind the devil and this seven of wands. There's some sort of final defense to release here. Feeling defensive or protective about something. And the three of swords being reversed, particularly with the energy that's approaching you is the Four of Swords, healing, healing and rest. There's um, going to be, yeah, you are definitely purging things from the past, but you're being held back and maybe even being isolated a little bit. Little roadblocks have been strategically put in place for you by the universe or are being strategically put in place for you by the universe because A, yes, there's something in the future for you that's really good. Like the, the colors in these two cards are really gray and blue and cold and drab. This, this hidden factor that you aren't aware of is so full of color and warmth and light and hope beauty and stability and abundance while you're being held back almost for something to prepare for you in the future you are going to obviously utilize this time it's going to be utilized you're going to utilize it and there are going to be triggers switches on and off switches i don't want to use the word trigger anymore because it's like a switch a little switch a little tap on your shoulder to remind you of something. And it will pull you there emotionally, not just in your thoughts. This is a very emotional level of healing. Well, something will, a little switch will go off and almost like being transported in space and time, but through emotions. Your emotions will be transported through space and time and you will feel that experience again. And somehow you will transmute it. We're really releasing quite a bit of energy to go into this full-on unity. Like a very, very deep connection between you and the universe and all those around you. And then it will feel... Because the fairy that we're talking most about here is this pregnant one who's moving forward, but she's looking at this king for guidance. It's clearing out, you see too, I'm thinking like there's all these cobwebs in this Four of Swords card. It's clearing out like the energy of cobwebic energy. I don't even know if that's a real thing. Like, like cobweb energy, cobwebic emotion. And by doing that, it makes it so much easier even to walk away from like saying goodbye to the Oak Men or goodbye to anything that had to be a rock or the rock or some form of stability that you relied upon. Really, this is a, a very deep reading. And these are things, this is a bit, I don't want to put it in like a dark night of the soul. It doesn't feel like that heavy. It just feels like all of a sudden, having some sort of a, an emotional experience because of something from your past and you're, you're kind of dropping it you're allowing the defense you know maybe always fighting this and it just flows out 
And then it's gone. It's done. You've experienced it. It's over. But what is this Ace of Swords you're being asked to release? I'm intrigued by this one. I'm not sure if you're being asked to release some sort of information. Or you're being asked to release the idea of releasing information. <laughs> really, there's so many ways that could be coming through. The Ace of Swords, what Cancer is being asked to release. order okay yeah this is like a temporary hold you have temperance the eight of cups and the chariot and there's your energy on the other side this is definitely if there's some sort of information or you're going to have some sort of information regarding the situation um about you i feel like it's some sort of situation about you it's not quite time. There's something you need to hold on to here. I've talked about it kind of in a metaphorical way. Um, you see how that applies to your life, that something's being prepared for you in the future. And then while you're in this holding pattern, you're going to, like the universe is taking this opportunity for you to um, alchemize, transmute, shift, change decompose i love decompose um the uh, past emotions and feelings and past experiences i love decompose because it too it speaks to me so much of your energy of the of the chariot oh, and a few of my decks the chariot is symbolized by a lotus flower coming up out of um, the depths of the water so the decomposition that takes place in the silty area of a river to allow nutrients to um, be sucked into the roots of these plants to create the most beautiful flower that you could see floating, just floating on the water. Like it's magic. So it's, it's, it's a decomposition process. That's exactly what this is. You are literally decomposing past experiences that you've had and they will no longer exist for you anymore once you complete this as uh, maybe past disappointments or um, feeling melancholy. They will just be experiences, but they are becoming the compost of a new beginning for you. It's really holistic. And it's, it's quite in tune with Earth and what you would have as a three-dimensional experience. It's very healthy. I do want to say that. I, I think it's very healthy. So, the Eight of Swords. The universe is asking you, don't fight this so much, but just embrace it. <laughs> embrace it. You won't be alone. Yeah, you know, what? there's a... Yeah, there's a black cat within the swords with her and there's a little blue bird above you might feel very alone but you're not like i always like to think that messages like this are coming out for a reason you know maybe to try to remind you you'll remember maybe you'll remember this if, if you hit a period of time where you just feel kind of trapped and isolated or maybe you're in that now and you need to hear the message that you're not alone Oh, you okay. I'm all in blue today and there's a little bluebird up there, right? So maybe I'm acting as a conduit for your spirit guide or whoever it is. Someone wants you to know that you're not alone. The Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords, what Cancer is being asked to embrace. Wow. The Three of Wands and the Lovers. Oh, there's something that you're, you really want to go towards. There's something that you're expecting to come. There's something, either, there's something that you're expecting to come. It does feel like that with the Three of Wands. Or that you're expecting to travel towards. Or that you're expecting to travel towards you. 
something that you have a deep connection with, but not yet. Anything else after the lover's card for this? The three of wands, the lovers, the four of cups, and the king of swords. I just feel like there's something being held for you. Something being held for you. Some of you too with this four of cups and the little blue bird with this eight of swords feeling forgotten. There's some strong clarity on the other side of this Eight of Swords for you. Now is not the time for whatever reason. Something, there's some stuff here that needs to be decomposed. Because this is not, this isn't a messing around card. Like this is a pretty serious energy. This unity. This is very divine. This isn't something that's going to happen. It is the beginning and it is the end. It is all. What goes on in between the beginning and the end is very important for both to be able to take place. Okay, the hidden factor you are unaware of is the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles. The Page of Swords and the Queen of Wands. You know, somebody might, I don't know, somebody might even be watching you when i first said i don't feel like i feel like something's almost being prepared for you in the future um but i don't feel like well they know you're coming oh it's so and so and we're going to prepare this <laughs> that it felt a little more obscure like people are just going through their normal routines the universe is guiding them and setting up things and they're making their free choices and it's creating something that you are going to be coming into but now with this page of swords and the queen of wands there could be, um, there could actually be someone who is observing or aware of you on some level somehow. Whether they're consciously aware or not. But just know something is being prepared in the future here. Anything comes in after the Queen of wands oh my gosh something sorry something is really being held back my gosh my gosh my gosh okay after the queen of wands the page of swords the queen of wands we have the two of swords the ten of wands the devil Shoot. you can't go into whatever this ten of cups is there's Ten of Cups. Hmm? Ten of Pentacles. Maybe it's Ten of Cups as well. Um, there's something that has to be released. And the universe isn't going to let whatever this is to come together until, even on both sides, on both ends, if this is if this is you and someone else, or this is you and a group of people, or this, this is you and a, um, a job opportunity, or a new home, or a new car, wh whatever that is. It's some kind of unity. Um, I want to say it feels very much more like a person or people, though, with all of this sitting on the other side of it. There is possibly even some sort of toxic or lower vibrational energy sitting on that end of it. And that has to be cleared out. Yeah, you, there may even be someone that you, you know of or you're yet to meet who is going through even a dark night of the soul, like releasing some heavy stuff. Or even in a situation, they could even be in a physical situation where they're feeling like they have to, be def they have to defend themselves for some reason. There's some sort of manipulation going on here. Like the devil is holding a bag of money And he's holding this ice, he's holding the bag of money near the boy. And then he's holding um, this little ice cream cone near the girl. 
I really recognized in this deck, the cats are, uh, they are depicted as some sort of guide, a spirit guide, a guardian angel. There's some sort of temptation that sits with this younger masculine energy because the orange cat is much more aggressive about trying to get his attention. Like she's crawling up onto his leg. There's something here. You have to be careful. Somebody's trying to manipulate you through money. So however this plays out for you, whether you see yourself as masculine or feminine, or you're in a situation that would be kind of considered masculine. Maybe if you're in some sort of a leadership role in, at work or in your community. Whoever the masculine energy is, the devil's the one looking at them. And the seven of wands is here. This is why you're going to feel alone. Because the girl has the black cat. But now look over here. The black cat has come over here. Because I feel like whoever this is, this card is talking about someone else to me. For you in this reading. There's someone else here on some level of this unity energy for you. You're being held back. You may feel alone. And maybe you may even feel like kind of spirit guides are not so much around. Or things are happening that don't typically happen for you your sort of um, own spiritual protection might be lower. I feel like there's some sort of energy around you that needs more protection at this time. And the little black cat that was looking after the girl may need to go forward to help in an energetic way. Yeah, there's something going on here with the Seven of Wands. Um, I'm going to look at that before I, I clarify your Four of Swords. This Seven of Wands... What's that? Oh, geez. I pulled because it flew out. It literally flew out of the deck and went back in, but was sticking out like that. It's the Seven of Wands. Yeah, somebody's... Um, oh, someone is trying to manipulate someone here. And I feel like it's like via money or some sort of status, monetary status. The devil. What is going on with this bag of money and the devil card? What is going on with this bag of money and the devil card? Oh. Wow, the Page of Wands and the Nine of Swords. Wow, this Page of Wands looks exactly like the Devil. Look at that. The long black hair and the black beard. Come on, come into focus, please. Here we go. Do you see the resemblance? <laughs> see, I think things like that are really key in terms of reading because this is telling me the Devil is acting as the Page of Wands here. And it's got somebody in their head big time with the Nine of Swords. And their, their defenses have to be up right now. Someone's trying to communicate some sort of a new beginning. Yeah, there's some sort of toxic energy playing around outside of you guys. And I do believe, too, at the beginning of this reading, I also said, maybe you're being held back because you have almost uh, gotten ahead in a cycle, whether that's a healing cycle or something. It's a little bit like, well, have an extra spare time, and your, your angels are thinking, well, you know what? You know what you could do with the spare time? You could work on all this stuff from the past. We're going to bring some of this stuff up for you every once in a while, and you're going to kind of transmute that, and you're going to be even better on <laughs> here. So the energy that is approaching you is the Four of Swords. It's going to be healed. The Four of Swords is clarified by that Eight of Swords, the Ten of Cups, and the King of Pentacles. You are, yeah, I feel like I'm repeating myself because you had one last tear. The last reading I did for you, Cancer, was one last tear. It was one last tear dripping from that heart. 
And uh, these may not even be tears of things more recent, but these are just tears to be shed to allow the past to really almost, oh gosh, this is happening to me. I'm getting from that movie, um, Inside Out. What was his name? The elephant dude. He was like part elephant, part dolphin. He was the imaginary friend of Joy. And, uh, and then he went into where they, the, the, the brain dump. You know, Joy ended up down there with him. and But he kind of sacrificed him himself to stay down there that so Joy could could get, could escape. If you haven't seen Inside Out, I don't care how old you are, you got to go watch that. This is a genius movie. It's really good. Um, but, and, and, and at the end, Bing Bong? Was that Bing Bong? Bing Bong, who's your friend? Bing Bong. And in the end, he fainted away and he was gone. And that's kind of, I feel a bit like what feelings from some sort of past experiences in life you're going to go through. This is a really neat energy. There's someone, I really feel like it's someone or a group of people that you're going to be coming into some sort of unity with in the future. But there's a toxic energy that has to be worked out there. Something is not quite completed in that healing cycle. You are being held back intentionally by the universe from this unity connection. However, it's going to, it looks to me, I feel like it's going to happen because after the Eight of Swords, it's almost like one last time. This is one last time. <laughs> one last time the universe is coming forward to tell you. And then you get the Ten of Cups and the King of Pentacles. Happiness, abundance, stability, uh, prosperity, joy. <laughs> it's all good stuff. Okay, anything else to clarify before I go and do your extended? You have the Ace of Pentacles at the bottom. I think that's it. That's a really intriguing reading, my dear Cancerians. So I'm going to go do the extended. As I said, the link is at the top of the description. Look forward to seeing you next time, whenever that is. <laughs> Where I'm not packing boxes or trying to deal with stuff. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.